Hi, so today we're going to be talking about pronoun case and how it applies to the multiple choice section of the SAT writing. So what's pronoun case? In general, pronoun case is determined by whether the pronoun you're using is being used as the subject or the object. Now you remember pronouns are anything that stand for a noun in the sentence. These aren't all the pronouns we have, but these are the big ones that we're going to be testing with pronoun case. So for example, if I'm the subject, I say I. I went to the store. If I'm the person doing the, ob the action and I'm the subject of the verb in a sentence, I use I. If you are the subject, if you're doing the action, then you use you. If it's a male person, you say he. A female person, you say she. Ne gender neutral, you say it. Plural, they. Um, and we, if you're among the people in the plural group. So the object means who is the action being done to or who is it being done for. And there's a lot of different ways to have objects, but basically these pronouns are always what you use when it's not the subject. So the only time you use this side is when it's the subject. And we'll, we can talk about a few different examples, but I, since I'm doing the action, I gave the book to him. Or I gave him the book. Or I read to him. So this is the basic concept, and you're probably pretty familiar with it. But this chart is going to come in handy on the SAT because as we go through, knowing which side of the chart we're on for any given question is going to help me determine which pronoun I have and whether I have an error in the identification, error identification section. Okay, so let's just take a look at a question and see if we can demonstrate some of these principles. Hearing the unexpected loud noise, Cindy, Leroy, and me were so startled that we almost jumped out of our seats. Okay, this is number 12, so it's actually not too difficult, but this one can be kind of tricky because, like a lot of the questions on the SAT writing error identification, it doesn't really sound wrong, does it? Cindy, Leroy, and me were so startled that we almost jumped out of our seats. It sounds perfectly fine to me in normal everyday English, but remember, the SAT writing isn't really testing normal everyday English. It's testing grammar rules that most people don't use when they're talking. So, here's the trick. I'm just going to tell you right now that the error is me and that it should be I. But how do you tell? So one of our first techniques for telling when to use me or I is to get rid of the other things in a plural object. So here I have a plural object. Sorry, a plural subject. So I get rid of the other things in a plural subject. Cindy, Leroy, and I are the subject of this sentence. But because Cindy and Leroy come first, it doesn't really sound wrong to say me. So one of the ways to check is to get rid of the other ones and try it with just the one you're testing. So hearing the unexpected loud noise, me, we're so startled. When you say that, it sounds flagrantly wrong, doesn't it? It's very easy to tell. So one of the key techniques in doing this is to eliminate the other things in the subject or the object and to test the pronoun alone. To test the pronoun alone. Some of our other big rules. When we're testing pronouns, Go like this. Some of our other big rules are about prepositions. If you're not sure if something should be a subject or an object, which side of the chart it should be on, one key giveaway is whether the noun comes after a preposition. Whether a noun comes after a preposition. So you have a list of prepositions. You're probably familiar with what a preposition is. Big prepositions include by, of, to, with, between, under, over, about. Whenever you see one of these words and it's followed by a noun, that noun is an object. It's on the right side of our chart. It's on the right side of our chart when it follows a preposition. So if I see by, I always say by me. If I see with, I say with me or with you or with him or with her. Never. Do I use a preposition on this side? So if the pronoun I'm testing follows a preposition, you never use the left side of this chart. 
You never use the subject side. Now it gets tricky. There are a couple of ones that get tested fairly often on the SAT that I'd like to show you now before we jump into the questions. One of the big ones is between. Between. So if the sentence says, There is, between you and me, a deep and lasting bond. There is, between you and me, a deep and lasting bond. Now, how do I check that? One of the rules we're going to talk about later with idioms is the fact that between always uses two nouns. Between always uses two nouns or at least a plural noun. So I can't get rid of you here. Remember I was suggesting before in order to test, in order to test the pronoun case, you could just get rid of the other part of the plural object. But I can't do that here because it's between. So how do I test it? And here's a little trick with between and with any other preposition that you feel needs to have a plural object. So when you can't just cross this out because it wouldn't make sense to say between me there is a deep bond, here's how you check. You go back to your chart, and it's good to keep just a mental image of this chart. You go back to your chart and you say, well, what if I put in a plural? What if I said between us there is a deep and lasting bond? Between us there is a deep and lasting bond. I can see that I wouldn't say we. I would never say between we there is a deep and lasting bond. That just sounds wrong. But because I say between us, that means I'm on this side of the chart. That means I don't think about the left side, I only use this side of the chart. So between me is fine. Between me is fine. Between you and me, there's a deep and lasting bond. Students often think that to say you and me is always wrong because people get corrected when they use it as a subject. They say you and me are going to the store. And that's wrong because you and me are subjects there. But you and me is sometimes right, especially when it comes after between. So the way to check is to just pick a plural pronoun from this chart, between us or between them, and if it works, then I'm on this side. So one of the other ones that they do do, there are two chairs between you and I. This comes up a lot on the SAT where they use I here instead of me. Now if we applied our rule that we just learned, said there are two chairs between you and I, I say that doesn't sound wrong because you and I sounds kind of right, but if I wanted to check it again I would just go back to my chart and I would put in a plural pronoun. So I'd say, all right, let's try, if I'm going to try I, I'll say between they or between we. Well, that doesn't make sense. So I don't want to be on this side of the chart. I want to be on the object side of the chart. So that's one of our biggest rules for pronoun case. If it's a pronoun that comes after a preposition, you always stay on the object side, the right side of the chart, with your me, you, him, her, it, them, us. All right, let's see how that works in practice with a couple of examples. So here, hearing the unexpected loud noise, Cindy Leroy, I crossed these out, and I, I can see this should be I. So my answer here was B, by crossing out the other members of the plural subject, I can see that I is the most appropriate pronoun to use. So my answer here is B, and I would change the me to I. Let's take a look at another one. The report Alexander is discussing a report prepared jointly by he and the committee does not take into account the socioeconomic status of those interviewed. Now this one is tricky. Um, as you can see, it's fairly high difficulty level. The thing that makes this tricky is this. Because he, if I remember my, my chart, he is in the subject column. But he is the one preparing the chart. Alexander is preparing the chart, so it seems like that's right, doesn't it? It seems like he, since he's doing the action, should be the subject, and we should be in the subject column. But this uses passive voice, something we'll talk about later, so even though he is doing the preparing, 
He's not the subject. The report is the subject. The report is prepared jointly by he and the committee. So that's kind of complicated. I wish I had a better rule to just know when to use he and when to use him. And the rule is, if it comes after a preposition, you use him. You use the object side of the chart. So that's it. If you see by, with, at, any preposition, and you hopefully can recognize prepositions. If not, there are charts available to help you memorize what's a preposition and what's not. But if it comes after a preposition, it's always an object. If it comes after a preposition, it's always an object that's on the object side. So even though this sounds kind of strange and you think that sounds like wrong English, it's actually perfectly fine. A report prepared jointly by him and the committee. Um, another thing I can do is just also, like we talked about, get rid of the committee. A report prepared jointly by him. That sounds a little better when I don't have the plural object. So these are my two big rules for pronoun case. Get rid of plural objects or subjects so that I have the pronoun isolated. And if it comes after a preposition, it's always an object. It's never a subject. Let's try another one. Apparently impressed with our plans, the foundation awarded Carlos and I a grant to establish a network of community centers throughout the city. Okay, so remember, just as a reminder, whenever I see a pronoun underline, I need to go through my checks. I need to go through my mechanical checks. I need to check agreement. I need to check case. Um, and those are the two we've learned about so far. But there are some other things we'll check as well later. But so far, if I'm going to check agreement, I is the subject. I don't really need to identify anything else because I can always be the subject of a sentence. But apparently, impressed with our plans, the foundation awarded Carlos and I. I see that I have something plural here. It's either a subject or an object, and I need to determine which one. So I'm going to apply my rule. I'm going to get rid of Carlos. Carlos is gone for the time being, and now I'm going to try it with just the I. Apparently impressed with our plans, the foundation awarded I a grant to establish a network. Now you can tell right away that sounds wrong, doesn't it? I wouldn't use I, I would use me. So the way to check it is to just get rid of the extra parts of the object and see what sounds right. See which side of the pronoun chart that you're on. In this case, I'm definitely on the object side of the chart. And that's basically it for pronoun case. Those are the two big rules and they will always steer, your, steer you in the right direction. Remember the rule about between though. If you can't remember that between is a preposition and that be between always is followed by an object, not a subject, the thing to do is to go back to your chart and use one of these two, between them or between us. Since we use between them or between us and not between they or we, we know we're on the object side of the chart. So that's basically it for pronoun case.